Welcome in to the DNVR Avalanche Podcast. That's Eric. I'm Rudo. I know the Avs preseason started today, but all I can think is, boy, I'm glad I don't cover the Broncos. <laughs> boy, I mean, uh, you know, the game was at, what, 11? Yeah. And the Avs at once. I didn't really get to watch much, but I did ask what the score was, and I was like, oh, boy. Well, you're right. That's a tough day. I think you're the lucky one if you didn't get to watch too much of it, probably. So was not pretty on their end. On the Avs end, they do lose the game 4-3. to three. Eric, when you were a player, did you care at all about the final score of a preseason game? You don't. I mean, I, you know, this is the God. That's honest truth. Like, you're, you play because you want to play the right way. You want to get your game going individually. You want to get going your, your game going as a team. But somewhere, <laughs> somehow, like, everybody's a competitor. But Jared Bednar is going to go home tonight, have a nice meal with his family. And... He's not going to lose any sleep tonight, that's for sure. Well, and, and let's be honest about it. Of the 20 guys that put on the Avs uniform today, maybe five, six of them are going to be playing games for the Avs this year? Yeah, that was a thin roster. I mean, uh, <laughs> it, it was really thin. It, it just on is. Both sides, both sides, yeah, right? for sure. Both sides. Uh, <laughs> we didn't see uh, Kirill the Thrill, Caprizo. Yeah. Um, you didn't see guys like that. So, but it was, uh, you know what? It got pretty slow at the start. It got a little bit better. It did. It did get a third little period better popped for both off teams, a little bit. second, yeah. third period. And then, you know, a little bit of action there. But um, it is what it is. It was some good, some bad. You know, we'll talk about it. Yep. But uh, turn the page, move on to the next one tomorrow. I want to start with some of the actual NHL guys. Top line for the game for the Avs was Colton, Wood, and Tatar. Let's get your thoughts on those three first. Is this a step in the right direction for some guys you're looking to find some chemistry going into the season? They've kind of been pegged as a line together. Yeah. Right? Did you like it? Is there more to work on? Yeah, I thought they were okay. I didn't expect much more. Um, we talked about it yesterday, right? Practice. Yep. I mean, you can see they're flying on two-on-ones or things like that. Now, meshing as a line, didn't really see much of that today or yesterday or in those systematic practices, um, systems practices, should I say. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they're okay. You know, they, again, you haven't played in a while. You're getting your legs going. You're getting to know one another. You're getting to know the building. You're getting to know. It sounds stupid, but it's, listen, you're creatures of habits as a player, and, and it's going to sound stupid, but it's like, <laughs> just coming in for a game like you don't even know where you're parking you don't even know what you're doing it sounds stupid but it throws your routine off so that's why those preseason games are there how, how long does it take me to, to get to the game you know yep. again yep. today was saturday or sunday but i mean on a weekday how long does it take you know all that kind of stuff so that's why you play those games you kind of get familiarized with everything somewhere you know would i thought you know again all three of those guys they they popped on the screen. You knew they were NHLers. As soon as they were on the ice, you could tell those guys are NHLers. There's some guys that clearly you see on on the 40 guys on you know on the rosters. Today, they're not NHLers. They're not ready for that. Uh, but clearly, Tatar, Wood, Colton, they're NHLers. They look like NHLers. They look yeah. like NHLers. They they're gonna get to know one another. We'll see how long it you know they, he keeps them together. But it's hard to uh, you know not give somebody as a line uh, as three individuals that i played in the nhl for a while more than just like one preseason game you know what i mean yeah, so yeah. it takes a little bit of time but they'll 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 get together they'll gel and then uh and again remember that's the abs third line right so it's not nathan mckillen's line and but on a game like today he was their top line and uh somewhere somehow you know give him a good test and a good grade they were fine the other thing I want to talk about those, well, at least Wood and Colton, as Ryan mentioned, Avs did take a ton of penalties today. A lot of rust, a lot of uh, maybe first preseason game jitters for some of the kids that this is their first real go at it here. 
And it's always like that for preseason games, too. You got, I saw Watts there, Watson. He's the uh, ex referee, right? Yep. Obviously, that's retired and now supervisor. And it's the same thing. He's there to judge the referees that are there, and they got to do their job. And it's always a little tighter in preseason because of all the reasons. They're getting the rust up their game as well. It's the best referees in, in the world. I mean, those guys are the top and referees but they got the work the kinks out and and uh you're right the first 10 minutes i think there was like seven penalties. yeah it was it's a lot not a lot of flow and it's not a lot of anything to the game so it's tough for guys that if you don't kill a penalty you're not you're not, you're not getting time uh, yeah. but we got to see like you know ross colton kill some penalties we talked about it yesterday yeah right? yeah and he um, looked good doing it too he's more than capable of killing penalties like you said he's killed in the american league just a matter of Getting that ice in the NHL hasn't, you know, hasn't gotten it in Tampa. Yep. Maybe he's gonna get it here, uh, as we saw in that, not the game-winning goal, but well, basically the third goal, right? That yeah. power play goal. Face-offs are important. Um, you know, I think Olafson loses that one, then yep. goes up to the point, boom, boom, pucks in your net. So, I think Colton can play uh, an important role. It all depends on again when everybody's healthy. How are they gonna divvy up that ice? And it's well, gonna be telling there for for Colton on the PK. And the other side of this, we talked a lot about Miles Wood, you know, would like to see him take a few less penalties this year than he did last year. You put him and Colton together, they activate that speed, fly up the ice, they drew two different penalties tonight. Absolutely. And and again, that's NHL speed, right? I mean, that's actually, that's probably, and Miles Wood, you're talking about probably top 5% NHL speed yep. in, in the league. He can I mean, fly. He can fly, <laughs> uh, you know. He's going to create with his speed. He's going to get opportunities for himself. And again, you know, if he had the hands to go with the speed, and I'm not saying he's terrible hands, I'm saying he'd be a $10 million a year player, right? I mean, it's just the way it is. Uh, but, but I do stick to my, my thought of yesterday, you know, and maybe AJ will be disappointed, but I, I'm still going to shoot for 20 for Miles Wood. Like he's <laughs> going to get those opportunities. It's just a matter of the make sure that they go in when, when, when they matter. Got to finish when they count, that's for sure. That's it. They don't count too much right now. Uh, let's get into our top five, Never Ordinary, presented by Bet365. I I adjusted this a little bit. You were going to give me five guys who look good from the game. I'm taking five winners of the preseason. We'll get to that in the top two a little bit. But we're starting with the guys from today's game. Number five, Henry Bowlby. You know, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, I hadn't seen him in a few years. Yeah. I remember him at Harvard and then lost track of him a little bit. And I had to look down on my sheet a couple times. And I was like, who is that again? You know what I mean? And then you're like, so that's a good sign because it's telling you, like, he's doing something productive. He's doing something to get himself noticed. Uh, got rewarded with a goal in the third, right? After you're doing the right things all game long. Again, a guy that's not on the contract. He's under AHL contract, right, uh, Rudolph, yep. I believe. But um, then again, if you don't make an impression, then you'll never get an NHL contract. So it's always kind of goes hand in hand. He made the most of his opportunity. He might not play another game. Uh, but, but at least today he showed that he was given an opportunity. He popped. He, sh he is, for me, a guy that should help the Eagles. Um, I really liked this game, and I was glad that uh, he got rewarded with a nice goal there. You know, was it the third? Yeah, the third. Second goal. Second, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. yeah, tied it back up for the yeah, Avs. I'm yeah. noticing you seem to like big physical guys. <laughs> well, I do, you know, because we're, <laughs> we got to, uh, you know, Miko, Nate. Yep. I mean, like, and those guys are there. That they're, they're not getting moved. Yeah, no one's replacing no them. No one's taking yeah. their spot, you know. So if you look at a lineup like that, they're getting the good ice. Therefore, they're getting 20, you know, whatever it is, 20, 25 minutes a night. So then, then whoop, whatever, if you're on that roster, your minutes are low, and you got to be able to to be able to play low minutes. That's where a, a guy like Poland, for example, for me, it's going to be interesting to see, even though he is a 30-goal college uh, <laughs> goals in college. Got to make that adjustment gotta, when gotta you go pro. Got to make that adjustment. Yeah. You got to make sure that. You're a hungry dog. Everything you're every time you're out there, you hunt the pucks, and you know, kind of like what Nikushkin came in from so far, yep. right? A couple of years back, and then next thing you know, he's from one of the hottest commodities in the league now. So, I think that Bobby, you know, Poland guys like Steinberg. Yeah. Uh, I thought that this guy passed the test today, even though he will not. 
uh, start the yeah. season or he doesn't have a contract. But I just thought it was a good impression by him. Uh, let's move on to some of the guys competing for some of those Av spots. Number four, you have Frederick Olofsson. Uh, I, I really want to expand that conversation to that entire line. It was uh, Olofsson, Tufty, and Kiviranta all playing together. Yeah, obviously they, they, they scored that nice goal early yep. in the game, right? Yep. You know, nice play. Pass across in the seam in the middle there. Nice shot by Kiviranta. Yep. Um, again, I'm going back to what you just said about those little... <laughs> Those small minutes that are left to crack all that the crumbs, right? You know, but someone's got to play the crumbs, and yep. and good teams, and you know, Stanley Cup teams, and and division champ teams, like people play well in the crummy minutes. Uh, this is a guy that knows it. Uh, it's gonna come in, and if he's gonna crack that roster spot, it's gonna be in those crummy minutes. So you have to make yourself available, like mentally, to know that there's times when there's penalties. Today, a different kind of game. Um, but it, sometimes you have a lot of power plays, therefore you're not, you know, on the power play. And yeah, yeah. also might be a guy that's going to kill. Who knows, right? You know, more, certainly more likely to kill than be on the power play. That's, that's my for point. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So, so you have to be ready, to, you know, to, to play those types of minutes. I again, I like the vers versatility. You can play center, even though he lost that draw, uh, you know, which led to a big goal in the third period. But still, um, you know, you can play center. You can kill penalties. You create a little ha havoc. You can, you know, get on pucks and, you know, maybe be a scratch and come back the next day hungry. You know, I don't think he's the type of guy that's going to sulk around. So I think he is a good 13, 14, 14. Who knows how this roster is going to shape up, but you're right. He's a guy that's certainly in the mix there to to see, uh, you know, who's going to find and uh, and win a spot there. So uh, let me ask you this. Would you, you approach a preseason game like this? Are you looking at guys' skill level at all in these things, or is it really just doing the small details, doing the physical work, trying to fit into a spot? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think if I'm, I mean, everybody's skilled. Everybody, I mean, at some point, sure. right? Everybody you make it to can, that level. Yeah. You make it to that level. I mean, everyone can. It sure is nice when you get on the power play and you get like first line minutes and you feel <laughs> good about yourself and you make plays in the five on three. It helps your confidence. It's a little hard when you don't play a lot. Then all of a sudden you got to go and, you know, you don't want to get scored on. There's a big difference ment mentally, right? You know, you're not playing the same way. Uh, but 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 th those guys have enough skills. Like, you know, all the guys I'm mentioning. I mean, even like I said, Poland, 30 goals in college. Yeah. I mean, you got to be you know, somewhere somewhat skilled to score 30 in college, you know what I mean? So, he obviously, he, he drives the net, he can shoot. Olaf says the same thing, you know, and, and there's guys that, again, I always go back to Logan uh, O'Connor, like, this is a guy that scored, what, 10 goals in college, maybe? And yeah, next thing you know, he, if that. He didn't, he didn't reach more than 15 in the American League, <laughs> and, uh, you know, but does the same, you know, same thing at the, at the NHL level, right? Yep. Because he can fill a role, he can fill those minutes with his speed, his tenacity, obviously a PK role. So you have to reinvent yourself. And I think that I'm talking about from your college years or your junior years, if you want to stick around in this league. And, and I think that a guy like Olofsson, a guy like, you know, for example, tonight, Bobby, you know, for me, he's trying yep. to show like, hey, I'm getting older, but, but I'm also not, you know, 40 years old and I have to retire. I'm 26, whatever he is. And. Maybe I can work myself towards a contract. So Olafson has the inside track to that job. Does Riley Tufty get any credit for scoring that last second goal? I mean, yeah, I was. I mean, you know, I didn't mind his game. He was, he was okay. Uh, you know, he had he had some good things, some bad things. I just, you know, with his size, I'd like to see a little bit more of what I'm. Again, if he's gonna play in the lineup, he's not playing Nathan McKinnon minutes. Oh, I mean, you know, if Riley Tufty. Played like Oscar, Ol or not Oscar, Frederick Olofsson played yeah. this game. You'd be saying he's a lock for the roster, right? That's my point, you know. So you have to be able to to get out there. And, and look, Riley's never going to play Miko Ranton in minutes. He's not. Yeah. Uh, and no offense to Riley, but he's he's not Miko Ranton. But you have to go and play those, you know, those seven, eight, nine, sometimes ten <clears throat> minutes. Like it's your last shift ever in the NHL. It's a privilege to play in the NHL. You gotta be like, it's. I, I don't want to say afterwards. Like, oh, I didn't get my chance. I only played eight minutes. You know, for me, it's like, wow, eight minutes is a lot more than zero. You had an opportunity. Somebody else didn't have that opportunity. Somebody else didn't even play that one shift. So you're in the lineup. You got to make the most of it.
Yep, I, I agree with you there. Uh, a guy who may have an opportunity to start off this season is our number three in goal, Eustace Annaman. He only played half the game, played the first half. They split it with home. He gives up just one goal in his 30 minutes. Looked pretty good, particularly early in that first period. Really kept the abs in it. Is is the backup job his to lose with the question marks about Frankie's health, Eric? Absolutely. I, I'm a big fan. I'm a, I've, I've always been a big fan. Uh, we were in Vegas, what, last week? And yep. I remember him like maybe four years ago at the Vegas tournament. And I was like, all right, I like this guy. You know what I mean? You know, And, and I don't necessarily like uh, big goalies. You know what I mean? I like sure. goal, uh, good goalies. <laughs> uh, I don't care if they're, you know. I too like good goalies. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like bad goalies. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But, uh, you know, Georgia, yeah, again, yeah. he's not 6'5", six, 6'4". Six, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't always, uh, you know, Vasilevsky, I think. He's a freak, though. <laughs> He's a freak of nature. It's not normal to be that good on your feet to be that big. But and, and sometimes bigger guys are they're just big. They're not yeah. as good on their yeah, feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not I as do, athletic. I, yeah. yeah, exactly. I, I, I love Annan's feet. I, I, for a big guy, he moves well. He makes saves. It's not just the puck hitting him. Um, he was squared to the shooters today. He looked like a guy that was really in control of everything. I do believe. He is more than capable of being a backup in the NHL for now. Who knows where it leads him? But I think his progression from the American League to, to here is more than. Again, I'm a Frankie fan. You know, Frankie's not here. Yep. So now you got to move on a little bit. And can this guy do it? I do believe after watching again today, he's uh, he's put in the work this summer. You can tell he's he's pretty sharp. He's Chris. He's on top of the crease. He's facing the shooters. You know what I mean? Really nice. He's challenging shooters. It's not like he's sideways. Uh, he's dead on to them. He's looking at them right in the eyes. I, I really like this game. Um, you know, would have been, you know, obviously it's preseason, but it would have been nice to see Oh, Cutie finish the game yeah. you know I mean? where he closes it and then, you know, he wins it 2 1. What's this whatever. game look yeah. like if he's yeah. still in net? Uh, the, is a performance like today's enough for him, for the Avs to say, hey, we're not going to go look at the waiver wire for an extra goalie. We're not going to go trade a, a fifth round pick for an extra goalie, something like that. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it. You look at their lineup; it's not the best lineup on the other for side sure. either, for on sure. their side. But all of a sudden, you give up five and a half a game, and then you're like, "Oh, whoa, <laughs> hold on!" And yeah. The next game, you don't have a good outing. They're like, "Oh, maybe we got to look," you know. <laughs> uh, but I, I mean, those guys are uh, UC Perkula, and you know. Peter Budai, uh, yep. guys, guys will look at a, a coaching staff. Um, I do believe that if nothing comes of it, they're more than fine. And I like home too. He did a good job, and it's not easy to come in the game. You know, bad luck there. He loses his helmet. Oh, yeah, you know, there's, puck there's, still you goes know, in. Puck yeah. goes in. You know, so. Well, but Abs I like give him. up a two on zero. Yeah, two on zero. <laughs> I mean, tough, I liked him too. Ass. He was yeah. good. I liked yeah. him. I liked his game. I, I do. Uh, I do believe that with those two guys, they're in pretty good shape with, with number two and number three. And, of course, we'll see what happens with Frankie. I mean, you never know. I'm not too sure. I don't think anyone knows what the uh, diagnostic is or, or what the timetable is. But, yeah, I, I think as as an organization, the Avalanche, if Chris McFarlane was right here, and he would tell you the same thing. I mean, every day you look at things to make the team better. and And sometimes it's through a trade. Sometimes it's through... Obviously, the draft, sometimes through free agency, and sometimes it's through the waiver wire. So, I mean, who knows what's going to happen with the waiver wire, but, you know, they'll have to look at it, and if there's one name that they like, and again, for people to understand, you don't just pick a guy on waivers, meaning, like, there's a pecking order, right? Yep. You know, that's, that doesn't mean that you put in claim in that you'll get that guy. So sometimes over the years, the Avs have put in claims on guys and someone else snags someone else them up. That's yeah. lower in the, I mean, higher in the pecking order slot, you know. So, but again, I think you have to look at it. Can this guy make us better than anything in that? Then if the answer is yes, then Chris would be to tell you, uh, the first guy to tell you here, like, yeah, we'll make whatever makes us the best, right? Better. Yep. Uh, Wild fan, we're talking right now about Ann and I think probably our, our best player for the Avs side of this game. On the wild side, take your pick of uh, Sammy Walker or Vinny Letary. Uh Those were the two putting the puck in the net on Minnesota's side. So yeah, and, and he was. I mean, what'd you say, Wallstead? Like the goal? Well, I Wallstead too. Oh yeah, yeah. and you said Walker. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, Walker had a great game. Yep. Letary, this guy lights up the American League every year. He's he's just he's a good player. He's a good American League player. I hate to label a guy that. Sure. But but, but he has been performing at the American level and he performs well wherever he goes he produces 
Um, so, I mean, he is a, a big get in the American League, and, and I've seen him pinch hit a few games here and there uh, at the NHL level, and he's more than fine. Uh, he's got a great hockey. He's good with the puck, and as we saw there on that last play there, he yep. makes that pretty – I mean, he buries that goal there. But, no, Walker, two goals. But then their goalie, they're in good shape there with Gustafsson and – or Gustafson, whatever you want to call it, and then uh, obviously Wallstad. Well, yep. he is good. He, yep. he is excellent. He was outstanding in the pipes there for them, and you can see why they picked him in the first round, right? Yep. Yep. So he's uh, he was a good guy to watch, and I was excited to see that. You know, and he ended up playing the whole game, which yep. is nice. You know, um, had altitude, forty plus. Had shots. the longevity to, exactly. to get through it. Yeah. the test. So good for him. Uh, our top two on this list are a little bit different. They did not play today, but we're calling it the winners of the preseason. And number two, I'm taking Jonathan Druin because this is a guy coming out of Montreal, coming out of some not great situations for himself. And what do they do with him? The second preseason starts, they stick him on their top line. They stick him with their best guys. And he's going to have every opportunity to be the best version of himself. And through three days of training camp, he looks really good. I, You know, you can only take so much from that, but... But he is a skill guy, right? Yeah. And he's done it before. And, yeah, there's a history with uh, McKinnon. Uh, but you're bang on. Uh, we're going to see him get every opportunity to look good, right? Yep. It, it, it's going to be handed on the silver platter for all the reasons, because he is an NHL player. And he's oh, yeah. been around in the NHL. And, and he's had success in the NHL. But if you got Jonathan Druin to put him on the fourth line or to go get some PK, but then you probably have the wrong guy, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, so I think they talked with the, the, the coaching staff this summer, and they, I think they got everybody involved and saying this is a low-risk acquisition for us, right? Uh, signing, sorry, not acquisition, because he's a UFA, right, signing. So he comes in, we're going to give him all that chances in the world. We're going to start maybe tomorrow night. We'll see it, right? You know, if he's in the lineup with... Uh, with whoever he's going to play with, you know, he's a guy that can play with skilled players. And obviously, yeah, good for him. He's looked good in practice. He's looked fast. He's looked confident. It is a tough situation to be a French kid in Montreal. Um, it, it is a tough situation if things don't go well. It's awesome when things go well. But when things go sideways a little bit, it could be a lot heavy on a player. And and it's unfortunate because they're so passionate and I'm not blaming the fans it's, they're so passionate they're so you know, there's such a history there and, and sometimes you, you just combine the two and it just doesn't work and it just simply wasn't working at the end there for Jonathan yep agree full stop and again it's an opportunity for him in Colorado and they clearly have shown they're going to give him some runway to work with there number one it's Nathan McKinnon not because of opportunity or anything in that preseason Guy gets his number retired in Halifax the other day. It's not an NHL team. It's a junior team. I get it, but that's still a big deal, right? It's awesome. I mean, that yeah. means that you left a mark on a franchise, and he was a young man, right? When did he get there? I don't remember. Was he 15 when he got there or 16? I don't know if he was one of those exceptions. No, nah, he was not exceptional, so, so he 16, but he might have so. gotten in like a couple games yeah, exactly. at 15 or Whatever. something. But, but. Is he, you know, he, he's a Maritimes boy. He was playing in Halifax. Good for him. Had a sick career there, right? They won the uh, Memorial Cup. Yep, yep. Uh, set the tone for him to to know what it takes to win. Um, all of a sudden, he, he he wins the Stanley Cup, and and you, like we talked about, you could see it in his eyes the last few days, even though he missed like a day yep. and so on. But it was good to have him come back, like you said, make sure he just came for practice, didn't take the day off, and showed up for the the second half or whatever it was of, of that practice there yesterday. So good to see him. Good to see the fire in his eyes. And if I'm the rest of the league right now, I'm shaking in my yeah. boots a little bit. Like uh, That that yeah. jersey retirement in Halifax might be a little bit of a glimpse of the future as McKinnon keeps making his legacy here you in Colorado. So, right? yeah. yeah. So did think that was super cool. Um, yeah. No one in Halifax is wearing 22 ever again. No one in Colorado is ever going to wear 29 ever again. So probably not. Yeah. Ah, it seems pretty easy one for me there. That was our never ordinary top five from bet three, six, five, a couple of other things that I wanted to uh, get into in this game. First Brady up there mentioned it. Malinsky. I didn't think he was terrible. Obviously the penalties at the end there were a little rough, but 
for first preseason game, really didn't mind him that much. I didn't mind him. He, he played. I thought him and Jack Johnson looked good. Yeah. You know, for some. Well, Jack Johnson, yep. Kale McCarr out there in preseason. Yeah, he was flying. <laughs> uh, but like we said, is this really an NHL game? It, it it's not. No. Yeah. Uh, but but it's better than rookie games. Yep. Um, I didn't mind him. He's so fluid out there. He can move. He can skate. He can pass. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough penalty at the end. you got to be in control of your stick, right? So you do that into a regular uh, NHL game, and it's, it, it costs a couple points. So uh, I would tell you that he's probably, you know, happy with his game to a certain extent. Yep. I think coaches are probably like, okay, he was okay. Yep. I would have liked to see more. Yeah. Because if you want, again, I'm, this is Bednar talking. You know, yeah, yeah. If you're going to crack the lineup or if you're going to be trustworthy of us putting you in the lineup, we probably want to see a little bit more. Yep. And, and sometimes, you got to remember, now we're down to five games. As much as this is like, yep. uh, but now you're down to five. Clock After starts tomorrow, ticking. After tomorrow, it's at yep. four. Yep. Clock is ticking. That's, you're, you're bang on. And, and if you got to, coaches don't have time to wait for you. You know, you might have time in San Jose. You don't have time here. This <laughs> is just yet. a different, you know, stage of the franchise. Mike Greer is going to do a good job there. David Quinn, they're going to do a good job. But today they have time to wait for a play. The Avalanche don't well, have time I, to wait. I, right. When the Avalanche hit game one of the regular season, they're trying to win every single night. They're the, gone. The Sharks, they can play whoever and lose games and not care. That's right. Two very different spots for those organizations. So I think, you know, I think Sam, like I said, he's uh, overall he's been good, uh, you know, from, from, from rookies to, uh, to, to now. Right to last I'd, week, whatever. You have you know? a game like this one. I think the expectation is you probably get one, two more preseason games. See if you can take another step. Exactly. And again, sometimes it's there's injuries. Sometimes there's no yep. injuries. Sometimes yep. there's room for you. Sometimes there's not. And that's what I was saying earlier. Like every time you got up an opportunity to go show what you can do, and, and to plead your case to to get into that lineup. And sometimes, like we talked about, it's not October or whatever it is. But it's more like in December when there's a couple injuries and you're like, boom, we have confidence in this kid. We know what he can do. So sometimes you're playing for some minutes in December, January, in those early yep. exhibition games. You got to make your mark now. The coaches remember you. Um, and two kind of mechanical things I want to talk about in this game. One, the Tanner Caro hit. Unfortunate situation. Catches the guy in the head pretty bad. I don't think... Both of them kind of just ran into each other. There's clearly no intent there. If that's you, is that a hockey play? Just yeah, unfortunate. I, I don't think he had a clue. Mm -hmm. I think he's just his eyes. I mean, I didn't see the angle of his eyes. Sure. We see the angle from the back. Yeah. Of his, but he, he clearly is looking. He's looking like over he's here. Looking yeah. He's looking. <laughs> and the other guy as well is you yeah, know, not yeah. looking. It, it was just like, it's a car crash that just happens. And yep. it's, I don't think it's anybody at fault there. And. Hopefully that uh, nothing much will uh, will come of yep. it, right? And yep. then there's no serious injuries there. And then we saw this happen to both teams multiple times in this game, which I suspect is a little bit of rust as much as anything else. But you're in your defensive zone. You lose your stick. Everyone else on this pod is very much a fan of go to the bench and get a new one. <laughs> you're the one who's actually had to play through stuff like that. And, uh, are you going to the bench or are you trying to defend with your body? Oh, but I agree. I mean, sometimes it's so frustrating. It's like, oh, God, if you would have just gone to the bench. Yeah. <laughs> it's situational to me. Like, obviously, okay. when you're on one end, if you got the closed bench, it's a lot no, easier. Oh, for sure. It's oh, second period got, makes I mean, it yeah. tough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Second period's tough. Like, the <laughs> changes are tough. Everything's tough. Um, yeah, sometimes it's just, you know, get a quick sprint, get a stick, yeah. come back. Uh, I'll tell you how the best way to do it is don't lose your stick. Right? I mean, <laughs> so that'd be a good start. That, that, that'd that's be a good start. Thing. You know, put a little <laughs> bit of like, you know, some glue there to make sure you don't <laughs> drop your stick. But uh, yeah, it is, it, it is 50 50 for me. I mean, sometimes you're just like, and sometimes you're so tired too. Like you have no yeah, gas. You're just and done. even just yeah. to skate to the bench, it's like, Can't my do it. God, I'm going to give this guy a runway now <laughs> to, to make a play. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, but I do tend to agree, though. I, I think more often than not, you go to the bench and try to get a stick, okay. you know. All right. Or even switch with, uh, you know, I mean, obviously, if you're a defenseman. Yeah, you give it to a defenseman, of course. It's just always easier, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So makes things a bit easier sometimes.
All right. I, we don't have to kick you off the pod. No, that's no, a good it's enough fine. answer. No, I agree. Sometimes, <laughs> especially from up top, the front, you're like, go yeah, get a right. stick. You know what I mean? I, ice level, it's a little different. Well, sometimes. Not sure. You're not sure. The same thing, you know that. But uh, and you always think that you can be the superhero too, and you know, like do something. But yeah, you're pretty I defenseless. Think nowadays, when you think you're the superhero, stick. you watch a puck go right between your legs yeah. most of the time. <laughs> stick, it's so. just like, and if you get it, you can't get it out. Right. So it would, like, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. You know what I mean? So it, doesn't, to... it doesn't look good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, definitely am on team get the stick. We'll yeah. put it that way. Yeah. Uh, it, look, the game itself, the scoreboard, I don't think we really care about. Even even the penalty numbers, which there were too many. You got you to gotta rein that in. But again, you look at the lineup and you say, hey, look, 10 of these dudes are going to be in Loveland or even lower than that in the next week. So. For sure. We, we said it earlier. Get the rust off of your game. Yep. Get your timing back a little bit. Get get the wind underneath your sail. You know, like you just got to move your feet. Uh, or for some guys, like I said, it's it's the other stuff like Tatar, all those guys. It's it's the get into the ring. It's the it's the get to know. I mean, never Finding been, that never rhythm. been at Ball yep. Arena. Yep. I mean, honestly, I'm sure they had the testing and that was it, but it yep. never for you a know, game day they don't even know yeah. where to stall it they've never practiced they don't even know like it's it's a little different how does this work do we do two sets of gears that, you know yep, so you're yep. learning oh is it just skates or you know they sound stupid but it's not because like i said we're creatures of habits as players and and every little thing can throw you off you know where do i get my coffee on the way in you know is it this way is it that place so it's uh it's important to get all these things and again obviously the connections between the players are important uh, I'm talking about on the ice, right? The chemistry, um, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't really look at. They didn't play a bad game. I mean, they got no, you know, yeah. they got 45 shots, yeah. whatever. It uh, is. Th- well, that's you know. the other thing I wanted to touch on is mechanically, systems wise, I think you liked a lot of what you saw out of uh, Colorado in this game. Uh, for absolutely, and then it just didn't win on the scoreboard. You yeah, know I mean? I, which is you know, and again. It, it, it sometimes during the season, you, you know, you, we talk about those moral victories. It's like, oh, if we play like this more often than not, we'll get wins. Well, it is true. You know what I mean? So I would say that a game like tonight, maybe you replay that game and, you know, all, all of a sudden you win like four out of five. And then tonight you lost that game. So you had a couple more guys who can finish into that lineup. Yeah, and you, you probably, know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, I, it wasn't that bad. It was, it was more than fine. The effort was there. It was just a little rusty, a little... You know, a little bit of a ham sandwich at times, <laughs> but it's uh, <laughs> with no mayo. But look, that's what the know? preseason is for. Yeah, that's uh, right. yeah, they're going to look like that sometimes. So it, I mean, it was more than fine. Uh, you're talking a little bit about getting to the rink, getting into rhythm for these guys. I'm curious. Any uh, any superstitions for you before games in the locker rooms? Any specifics? <laughs> Buddy, <laughs> I got to be honest with you. Like, like I said, creatures of habits. And yep. It's crazy. And a lot of people that I play with, they'll tell you like, no, no, I don't have. I didn't have superstition. It's not necessarily necessarily superstition. It's, it's more. It's just like, habits. It's yeah. preparation. Yeah. It's habits. And then, and then the more like one day, the more everything's thrown off. It's so weird because your game is thrown off, <laughs> and then you have an awful game, and you're like, <laughs> it's weird. But it's uh no. I mean, it, my, I was like a clock. So for me, it <laughs> had to be. I, I said it two days ago. What do we say? Like consist- consistency is longevity in this yep, game. Well, you gotta yep. be consistent. I, I mean, I took that to heart. And there was a, a then the nap was at the same time, the wake ups at the same time, <laughs> get in the car at the same time. You get to the rink, you do the same things. And whether you realize it or not, even the guys that say they're not superstitious, next thing you know, you're going in the parking yeah, lot same time all as of them. Sudden. You're walking outside of the room working yep. on your stick same time as them. Same it's always spot. the same yeah, spot, same yeah, guys. Yeah. So you don't even realize it. Patty Wah was crazy. He, I mean, he was like, ooh, <laughs> talking about superstitions, you know, and everything, and don't touch this and don't touch this line, and this is how it is. And, you know, and I get it, you know what I mean? And I, I believe it's more it's preparation. Just ways to find consistency absolutely, in your day. Absolutely, yeah. and it's your preparation, and and this is what you do. We talked about Cogliano being a pro yep, and those yep, guys. Yep. You know, I think I think was it uh, was it who was talking? Oh, Bo Byron was talking about how Cogs has been great, like yep. showing them how to be a pro. It's the same thing. It's how just to do to get some in, of those habits. Get yeah. into the routine of yep. those habits, so you're not just like winging it every day. You know what I mean? Yep, so, yep, yep. and I think it translates to the ice, and then you have habits on the ice, right? So, you know, I think it's a big word, superstition. I think it's more preparation. 
All right. I, I like that answer. That's a good right, answer for right. that. I, 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 you're right. A lot of guys just say, ah, I'm not yeah, superstitious. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. That was a good answer. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to add for this game, or should we get out of here? No, I, I thought it was fun. It was fun to see some hockey. It was great to be at Ball Arena, and you know, it was a good crowd, actually. It was, uh, you know, again, it's not the crowd that we'll see in a couple of weeks, but it was still a good crowd. It was fun. It was it smelled like hockey. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's good you know, to be back. It was good to be back. It was good to see some guys make most of their opportunities. And, and uh, you know, like I'm sure the coach would tell you, like lots of work to do. And it was a step in the right direction. Yep. All right. We're going to get out of here for today. A quick one on the preseason game breakdown. Abs do play again tomorrow. We will not be live until Tuesday. We'll break down that game on a Tuesday show. So enjoy the game tomorrow, but we will not be on for that. You can still find all of our content, of course, on Twitter, the DNVR.com videos, all that stuff. So we'll have you covered there. Uh, be sure to tune in on Tuesday. Other than that, I hope y'all have a great rest of your Sunday, and we will see you on the next one.